Hey guys, and happy Halloween to everybody. Man, Halloween is such a great time to be a gamer. I mean, we got all these great games like Angry Birds Seasons and probably some other games. Now, there's only one console's existence that is so questionable, so confusing, that it makes the entire company look like a joke. A console that's so bad that the whole company gave up and stopped making consoles soon after. And that console is none other than the Sega Genesis. I mean, look at this thing. That's a piece of plastic, all right. You know, I think I have just the place for this. I got a box. This thing is beyond repair. We tried and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this thing is broken. Now, these things are prone to hardware failure. So let's boot it up and see what's wrong. I mean, it can't be that bad. Oh my God. It's a green screen application. Back in the late 70s, gaming was mostly an arcade cabinet thing, which would require you to get up and drive to the nearest arcade. Boring. I mean, of course you had the Atari 2600 and the Magnavox Odyssey, but this was the controller. Does that look like a video game to you? But in 1983, or in America in 1985, gaming was about to change forever with the introduction of the new Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, I'm a pretty lucky man to say I still have one of these that at least kind of works. I mean, it plays the games, but there's quite a process to get it to work. I try. Action set, huh? Yeah, I guess. I miss when game boxes were playful like this. I mean, the Nintendo looks like it's floating in space. That has such an 80s feel to it. And a huge blurb of text on the back telling you why you should buy their system and not the competitions, followed by a picture of a family enjoying the console on the back. I mean, nowadays it's just so bland. I mean, the Nintendo Switch box has nothing going on. It's just a red background on both sides. Is this supposed to get me excited? Personally, nothing gets me excited like the controllers. I mean, look at this thing. This is what many people consider to be the first gaming controller, and this controller is so fun to play with even if you're not doing anything. It has a d-pad that moves around pretty fluently, a start and select button that feel pretty damn good, and to top it all off, two of the most satisfying buttons your fingers will ever press. I mean, try going back to modern day controllers after this, it's impossible. It also comes with another controller, the NES Zapper, or as I like to call it, a gun. Now, mine's broken, which is fine, because I only have one game that uses this thing, but it's still a pretty solid controller to hold, you know, being the shape of a gun and all. But wait, we're not done. Now we got the main man himself, the NES. Compared to Nintendo's other consoles, this thing is giant. I mean, you can almost fit an entire Switch in here. It has two controller ports, a standard for gaming in this era and some extremely nice feeling buttons for power and reset. I mean, compare them to the Sega Genesis and its stupid sliders. Points to Nintendo. I get VHS player vibes from this thing. I just feel like that's what Nintendo was going for with the flap on the top and the way you slide the games in. It's extremely satisfying, but not as satisfying as playing the actual games. There we go. This ought to be good. I wish games still looked like this. I mean, look at the picture. He's getting chased by a giant weenie. What in the world could this game be about? I don't get it. I have a challenge for you. Tell me what on earth is going on here. A lot of these games are very similar in the fact that they're endurance-based high score games. There's not really an end to them. Look no further than Burger Time, a game that you gotta make hamburgers in. I guess it checks out. These little guys run around and try to kill you and you throw salt at them? I don't really know what it is. Now you're trying to knock down the burger ingredients to make burgers at the bottom of the screen and for some reason it's really hard. A lot of games from this era are extremely challenging, it's just kind of their thing. Look no further than Back to the Future. I'm gonna keep it 100% honest with you, I have not the slightest clue as to what's going on here. 
You have this picture of your family at the bottom of the screen and they disappear the longer you play. I think collecting these clocks prevents that, but it just doesn't work, so I don't really know. There's these guys that hold nothing and it turns into glass as soon as you hit them. Or maybe there's something wrong with my cartridge. This thing's probably 30 years old at least. Yeah, I couldn't figure this one out. I tried collecting every clock and nothing happened. And on top of that, you die for any reason in this game. Bird flies in front of you, dead. This guy steals your lunch money, dead. Stub your toe on this corner, dead. It just makes no sense. But what about games here that I actually enjoy? Super Mario Brothers. I don't know who hasn't heard of this game. I mean, guys, it's Mario. For the longest time, I was convinced this was the first video game ever. I don't know why I thought that, but look at me, I was a dumb child. I have to say, this game is way harder than I remember. I mean, I remember breezing through this game, and nowadays, not so much. I'm failing as a gamer. Mario 1 was such a solid game, and you'd think Mario 2 would build off this and be the same game, but better. This isn't Mario! If you didn't know, Mario Bros. 2 isn't even a Mario game. It's just a reskin of another game called Doki Doki Panic. Now, the reason Nintendo did this is because they thought the actual version of Mario Bros. 2 they made was too hard for us over in America, so they gave us the baby's version. I'm a gamer. I can handle this. Yeah, the actual Mario Bros. 2 is extremely hard, but us here in America, we did eventually get the original Mario Bros. 2, but it was labeled as Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, so that's pretty cool. But third time's the charm, Mario Bros. 3, one of my favorite 2D platformers, and I feel like it doesn't get as much praise as it should. This is one of the best looking NES games out there. A lot of these games' graphics didn't age very well, and I can't say I'm surprised. But this game has one of the most appealing art styles I've ever seen in an 8-bit game, and the fact that I don't hear people talking about it ever makes me kind of sad. This game was the first to feature the Tanuki Tale, also known as Furry Mario. It was a power-up that became a mainstay for future games. I also thought this was the Mario game that introduced picking up shells, but I guess not. I ran into them and they would always just launch, so I don't know. But well, by far, one of the coolest additions is the world map. A common thing nowadays, but back then, it was super cool to me. But what if your NES decides it wants to stop working? I mean, that's a pretty common thing with them being 30 years old and all. I got just the thing for this. The NES Cleaning Kit, something every modern day NES owner should have. As Mario says, this will keep you in the game. That says it can help with blue screens, huh? Hey, that's the problem I'm having. It comes with some instructions, a bag with everything you need to clean it, and the giant plastic thing that you used to get in the console. It tells me to put water on this. Yeah, I think this will do. Well, time for the moment of truth. Yes! Next, we got Caesar's Palace, and look at the cartridge. This thing looks like it's loads of fun. <laughs> this is a gambling game, could you tell? I mean, it's fine. I'm sure if you like gambling, this will appeal to you, but I just don't really care for this sort of thing. It's got all your favorite gambling games, like some card game and $100 slot machine. It's really all the same. Next. Oh my god. The games are threatening me now. Move aside, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. There's a new skate game in town that's way better than your garbage. If you couldn't tell by the name, this is a skating game. Shocker, I know. There's a few modes here, like freestyle. And pool. Yeah, I have no clue how to even play this one. Also, I'm not sure why, but the aspect ratio in this game just kept changing. I don't know if that's a feature of the game, but it's a pretty dumb feature. I couldn't even figure out how to make the skateboard go. And even when I did, I couldn't figure out how to do any tricks. And I'm a prime gamer, so how did people in the 90s play this? Probably with the controller. Let me ask you a question. Who likes Ninja Turtles? Ooh, me! Now, who has seen the game? There's a game?
I tried this one and I have no clue what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, does that mean I didn't have fun? Well, of course not. It's Ninja Turtles. From what I played, you're just kind of running through the sewers and you fight bosses from here and there. Now, the game loves throwing enemies at you, especially when you have low health, so you better be careful. No! Dick Tracy is a video game, all right. It's a normal day in the city for me, driving around, getting shot at by men on the roof. What? We got some crime going on. Yeah, not when I'm on duty. I'm shutting that down right now. Uh-oh. I died so many times in this game because what was going on? I mean, I'm driving a car around the city, then I'm fighting men in an alleyway. What's that? A gun. And now I'm dead. I think you're supposed to arrest someone, but I couldn't find anybody to arrest because everybody that I ran into had a gun and I didn't. Man, I can't wait to see what this game is. It's pool. I'm not explaining this one. Nothing gets me excited like a good racing game. So then why am I playing Excite Bike? I get that this game was popular back in the 80s, but why? In other games, you usually had different areas to explore or literally anything going on whatsoever. But in this game, you hold the A or the B button and go over ramps and it doesn't even let you do tricks. <laughs> Fixed it. Tetris. You do shapes. Now, Smash Bros fans, tell me, did you know they have a game? Ice Climbers reminds me a lot of old arcade Donkey Kong in the sense that you're trying to climb to the top of various different boards, but in this game, instead of climbing ladders, you're just smashing your head into the bottom of ice. Oh my god, are you okay? This game has some of the worst physics I've ever seen in my life. I mean, look at this. I didn't miss that. It's an extremely simple game, but boy is it fun. Games like this are so addicting for some reason. I don't know why, but they're always just such a good time. Maybe it's because they're all high score based, or maybe I'm just easily entertained. All I know is kids in the 80s were eating good with this game. And that was the Nintendo Entertainment System, one of my favorite consoles, period. It can be insightful to look back on these sometime to see how gaming as a whole has improved, or if you just want to play the classics again. And you know, I always knew there was a problem I had with this console. I just couldn't think of it until now. I don't think they made the game cards big enough.